Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I give you a complete beginner's tutorial on using the heart of Photoshop layers. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, and I make two tutorials per week. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and click here to get the raw files, the JPEGs, the 3D objects, the PDF, a lot of stuff for free. All you have to do is subscribe to my newsletters. Before I present to you this uh, complete beginner's tutorial on layers, I just want to announce that I have a new course coming out. It's called Paris in Spring, and what it is, is a complete Lightroom 5 tutorial. It's my completed updated workflow on how to retouch from A to Z. I gathered with some photographer a couple of weeks ago and we took a lot of nice photos of Paris. And there's two parts, part one and part two. Basically, what it is, is part one is 10 projects, which is some of my best photos of Paris. And I show you all the retouching from A to Z in Lightroom, sometimes with a little bit of Photoshop, but very little. It's 90% Lightroom 5 and it's my completely up-to-date workflow. You can see some of the before and afters and final result as I'm speaking. All right, so check out, plus we have an amazing release price for this course, which you can get by clicking here. Now, this week I'm going to do something that I don't usually do, is a complete beginner's tutorial on layers. A lot of people I find actually use Lightroom, but don't have the basics right about Photoshop. So from time to time, I'm going to do like complete beginner's tutorial. So if you know everything there is to know about layers, please stop the video here because you will not learn one thing. But if you're new or confused about layers, which is really the heart of Photoshop, here I come. Welcome to this beginner guide on using layers in Photoshop. Now I have Photoshop CC opened with only one windows, which is a layer window. Now, if you don't find your layer window, you can always go to windows and make sure that layer is checked on. I have closed every other uh, windows. Normally by default, I believe when you start, you would go into the essential settings. Let me go for, for example, to photography and then back to uh, essentials. That's, yeah, that's my essential setting with just a layer on actually turned off every other window. So it's important you just have the layer windows open because we're gonna learn layers. I mean, I know when the first time I opened Photoshop, I saw all these windows and I got really confused. Now, in case you wanna close a window, let's say for example, the history window, all you have to do is, you see this little arrow, you go here, uh, sorry, this arrow and you go close tab group and you close that. All we want for now is the layers. Let's make it simple, the layer window, okay? Now, to illustrate how the layer works, we're gonna, replace the sky of a photo. So for this, I'm gonna open, and you have to open the two files which are given with episode one to seven, which is the frenchacademy.jpg and the bluesky.jpg. So you can select both, that's the good thing with Photoshop, you can open two files at a time. Now by default, oh, let me move this down so you can see. By default, I have a tab version of things. Now, there is different, uh, ways of displaying windows in Photoshop. One, this is a tab version, which is what I like, but if you want to change, you can go to um, Windows, Arrange, and in, you can go to Tile All Vertically, for example, and what that's going to give you is two photos side by side with each its own Windows and tab system. Or you can, if you want to have it like I like it, you can just go to Consolidate All to Tabs. Okay, now, to, uh, to move a photo from one tab to another is different, whether you are in tab mode or if you're in Windows mode. I'm gonna show you how you do it uh, in, um, in uh, tab mode. Tab mode is, you see, both of them are on the same window. So in, I wanna get my sky on the top of my French Academy. So for this, I click this tool, which is a move tool. I click on the, uh, the photo itself. I drag and drop it over that first tab. I hold, I'm still holding on my left mouse and I'm holding down the shift key before I drop. It's gonna center it and put it right over. And you can see now we've got two layers, one called background and one called layers. Let me delete that and redo it for you again in case you're not in tab mode, but you're in tile mode. So I'm gonna put it uh, tile vertically. Okay, so now I wanna get this guy over here. The way you do that, well, you click first on the window to make it active, you take the layer itself and you drop it on the top of the photo. Uh, and now this Windows has got two layers. 
So different fields of view. One, you have to click on the window, which is the tab mode. And one, you have to click on the layer, which is a tile mode. Okay, let's go back to my favorite, which is consolidate all to tabs. Okay, so now, um, okay, let me make my layer uh, window a bit smaller. I'm not gonna go, I mean, layers is, is the heart of Lightroom. It really is the heart of Lightroom. But there is two concepts you should be familiar with. And one is blending mode and the other one is masking. Okay, now we're gonna start at blending modes. What blending modes is, is basically Photoshop is reading the, uh, the layers from top to bottom. So right now we are in normal mode. So all it sees is the first layer, which is a sky layer. Now, if I turn it off, I can see what's below that, which is the background layer. Let me turn it back on. So we've got the sky layer on top. Now, when you open this, um, when you click here, you get all kind of different blending modes. Okay. Now to make it simple for you, I'm only going to talk to you about three blending modes, which are used in most of the cases. Uh, the, well, the first one of course is normal, right? I'm not going to go into dissolve, but here in this first part, all these blending modes are going to blend both layers, but the overall result will be darker. Let me show it to you. For example, the most used one is multiply and that's the one we're going to be using today. Multiply, what it does is that it takes anything which is white and makes it transparent. This way, we can see the sky is blending pretty well on the photo. Of course, we have troubles because now we have sky on the woods. Some of the plants from the first you know, uh, photo is on the woods there, so it's not very natural, but it's pretty well blended, okay? So the first category uh, are gonna make things darker somehow. Well, not darkened for it, but color burn is gonna make things darker, linear burn, darker, darker color, you know? Well, that's not really darker, it's kind of weird. Um, Usually in this mode, 90% of the time I use multiply, okay? Then with the next family is the reverse. It's gonna make things brighter and 90% of the time I use screen. So multiply for the darker, screen for the lighter. Now screen is the opposite. Screen is gonna make anything which is dark, uh, black become transparent. Now it's not very useful for this photo. So uh, I'm not gonna use it so much. And then the next family, so if you lighten, you know, color dodge, all this is gonna make the end result brighter. It's just, you know, different mathematical way of blending your photos. This one is just gonna result in a brighter photo. Okay, and then we have the next family and the last family I'm gonna talk about, it's the contrast family. Uh, basically, it's gonna, anything, it's gonna take any information from the first layer, anything which is dark is gonna be darkened on this photo and anything, anything which is light is gonna be brighter on this photo. Sometime overlay and soft light are really good blending modes you know, this is not so bad, you know, to blending some of the clouds, but they are not visible enough. Now, uh, on this photo, I on purposely, let, let me show you the, uh, let me turn this off. I on purposely took a very bright photo where the sky was totally burned. There was no info on the sky uh, because it's easy to do blending this way. Uh, of course, uh, I have more advanced, like I have a full sky replacement course. You can check on my website where I can I talk about different other cases where, you know, it's a dark photo, it's not. Now this one is on purpose very light, okay? So now I wanna show this to you. I'm gonna activate the first layer and I'm gonna put it into the multiply mode, okay? That's what I showed you before. Now I like that because the multiply mode, if, if I press the zoom here and I zoom in, you see it's totally well blended everywhere. The only thing which is a bit weird is that we have, you know, a bit of, of sky now, a bit of clouds on the texture itself. It's not so much visible here on the building, but it's very visible here, for example, okay? So how do we correct that? How, to, how do we make that blending uh, more real, more natural? Well, by creating a mask. Now, what is a mask? Mask is one of the most powerful, along with blending modes tool in Photoshop. Here is all the tools about masking. Uh, the first one uh, that we're gonna talk about is this one. This one is uh, all about uh, add a layer mask. If I click on it, okay, let me zoom back out. If I click on it, it's gonna, oh, it's gonna put in a mask uh, which is white. Now by default, a white mask will, anything that's on the layer be visible, right? Now, if instead, if I go to edit, okay, and I fill this mask with black, so I'm just filling the mask with black. Now anything which will be on that sky will be invisible. 
Now we don't want that. We want it to be mostly visible. The decision, so the decision to start with a white mask, everything visible, or a black mask, everything invisible, is basically uh, is the information on that layer going to be uh, very present or not very present? In this case, it's going to be very present. I want a lot of this sky to be here. So let me go back to edit. I'm going to fill this not with black this time, but with white. Okay. So with white, it's going to make everything visible uh, from this layer. Now, how do we blend both things? Well, we're going to blend this with a brush because now if I have a white mask and I'm starting to brush with black, so let me take a brush. Here is a brush, right? It's a big brush. My foreground color is black. Okay. Now, there is one thing which is two notion which is very important for you to understand about brushes. One is the opacity of the brush. Okay, I'm not going to go into flow and opacity for now. Let's just say that opacity and flow is the power of the brush. You know, how much color is it going to pour out? If opacity is at 100% and flow as 100%, it's going to be very powerful. So if I brush with black, what's going to happen is that it's going to take out completely the information, it's not erasing the sky, it's just hiding it where I, where I did it. And it did it completely. Okay, let me undo that with Command Z. I want to show you another notion about the brush and that's the hardness. Now right now the hardness is at 0%. That means that brush was very soft. Now, let me put it very hard. Okay, and let's do the same brush stroke that I did before. Now, you see how it's totally visible because that brush stroke had no feathering. It was a very hard edge brush. So that's totally unrealistic. So commence you again to undo and let's go back to a hardness brush. Now, if I brush again, I don't necessarily want to take completely out uh, the, the sky information. I want to get it, you know, away uh, bits by bits. I want to control a bit better this. So let me command Z this again. And this is where opacity falls in. If I lower the opacity of my brush, Instead of painting, oh, let me show this to you. I'm going to paint this. So if you want to see in big what your mask looks like, you can just press the Alt key and click on your mask. You see, I have a big black brush, but it's very feathered. It goes to the gray. It's very gradient all around. That's why it's, it's very soft and that's why it's blending pretty natural. So to come back and to see again your, your photo without the masking information, just click again with the Alt key. Okay. Now, I'm to come and see this. Now, let's say that I'm going to put the opacity of my brush instead of 100% at 20%. And I'm going to do the same brush stroke. Okay, you hardly notice anything. Now, let's click with the Alt on the mask. And you can see, I just put a little bit of gray there. What the, so a little bit of gray, what it did, it took a little bit out of the sky. Now, this is how I like to work because I've got a very small brush and now I can, you see, here there is clouds. I can just brush the clouds away bits by bit. You see here there is some uh, um, grass or trees that belongs to the sky photo. I can just, you know, slowly but surely take it out, but not too much, just a little bit at a time. And this way I can blend both photos pretty realistically. Okay, let's, I can, so if you want to make your brush shorter, you can just press the control and alt key and left click. And now I can just paint here. And you know, and now I have totally blended both things. Now look at how the mask is looking at. The mask is just has some gray points, a bit darker at some places here where we had the trees. And so let me press the Alt key again. And this way we've met, melted, blended, sorry, both photos. Check it out before the sky replacement, after the sky replacement. So we added drama. Okay. So that's the basic theory of, uh, of, uh, you know, of masking and layers. You see, uh, Photoshop is reading the information from the top down, but taking into account the masking and taking into account the blending modes. And uh, this is how, uh, basically, this is all there is to know about layers. I mean, from there on, of course, you can build more complex things. You can use different blending modes. You can do a lot of things with masks, but that's the basic philosophy of it. So don't be afraid, you know, try to do this first exercise and when you master it, take some of your photos and try to replace some of the sky. You know, I would suggest you start, that's the easiest one to start with, is, is take very, very um, burned out photo where the sky is very white and your subject is very bright. Because when you're going to put the multiply 
mode on with some clouds that you took at a later time is going to make the whole photo darker. So if your photo is already a bit dark, it's going to be way too dark. But I kind of like the result of this. Now, uh, layers also have adjustment layers. I'm not going to go much into them, but um, basically, so that's that was the masking option. The adjustment layers is all kind of post processing things you can do. For example, um, what I can do is I can go to uh, brightness and contrast. Okay, brightness and contrast. Now I've added a layer it's called brightness and contrast. And on the right side here, you see there's properties. Well, it's pretty simple, you know. If you go to the right, it just adds contrast. And if you go to the right or left, it adds brightness, you know. So I, can, I just want to make, now that I have, you know, these two, these two layers, it's still reading from the top down, but it's not taking into that account. So this is not, all it does, it says, put in more brightness, put in more contrast, but I kind of like the result, how it looks like, you know. Now we've got a good drama photo. And, uh, and voila, so that's just a little introduction on layers and how layer works. If you want to know more uh, on using Photoshop and want to get you know more advanced into it, I suggest that you purchase the Photoshop for Photographer course. You will find it on my website, photosearch.com, Photoshop for Photographer. Uh, you can click here on more info. And I, I try to explain Photoshop in simple terms like I've tried to do today. Hope you uh, spotted that. And, you know, I just take it from very, very simple examples to more and more complex, more and more complex until you kind of master Photoshop for photography retouching. It's not for design. It's not for 3D. It's really for photographer. OK, I hope you uh, you like this uh, sky replacement and its introduction to layers in Photoshop. I mean, the sky is just a limit with a software like Photoshop. It's really fun to play. And uh, I love, you know, doing composites and being very creative because, you know, there is really you know, nothing that can just stop you from doing anything. So back to me. All right, mesdames and messieurs, I hope you like this and I hope it helps you understand a bit better the heart of Photoshop layers. And I will see you in another episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.